Have you ever been added to death? And by added to death, I mean ads thrown at you so much that you think you want to watch a show and then you watch it and you're like, ah, those damn ads got me again. Welcome to the class of 09. Hello, everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. First two episodes of Class of 09 have dropped. Um, it is a new FX slash Hulu. I don't know how this quite works with the, two of the, with the two of those networks. I know they're sort of working conjunction, but it's a new Hulu FX series um, starring Brian Tyree Henry and uh, Kate Mara. And it's from the showrunner, writer, creator who did the second season, who wrote the second season of uh, American Crime Story, the Gianna, Gianni Versace one, which was really good. Um, and like that show, which used sort of like he's becoming the Christopher Nolan of TV, uses time and kind of goes back with flashbacks and whatnot. That is the thesis of what this show does. Um, Class of 09. Uh, stars basically the the rookie class of that year: Teo Michael, played by uh, played by Brian Tyree Henry, um, Ashley Poet, played by Kate Mara, and then there's two others that are or um, who is who is Ashley's roommate, and then Daniel Lennox. Those are the four main names that you're kind of going to become familiar with if you continue on with the show. And it takes place over three time periods. It takes place in the in '09. It's very old school. Nostalgic has a little bit of a that that old school vibe to it. Um, then there's the present day, which is uh, 2023, which is pretty much normal, like a typical drama. Like that's how it's shot. And then the future version, which is 2034, which has some heightened reality, some things that are a little bit more futuristic, and it's kind of more of a um, uh, a futuristic sheen. You can clearly tell the difference between the three and the three era even without the little time stamp that comes up every now and then to tell you. You can also tell by the, the bad hair jobs and hair pieces and dyeing of people's hairs, uh, especially for Brian Tyree Henry, who does, black man, clearly doesn't age that much over those times. It's just like, cool, let's put a couple of grays here and there to change the difference. But that is the concept of this. I hate to say this, but this is a show that relies way more on that concept and that conceit than it does to have any sort of dramatic weight, especially in the first episode. The second episode does pick up a little bit more. The first episode is a it's a chore for me, anyway, to get through. Our uh, first episode is called Part of Something, and it's essentially establishing the rules of how we go from present to future to past and how one, re one has an effect on the other. Um, in the past, we have sort of an explanation of, this is the first day of all of these folks on Quantico. They're all going into the FBI. You get to see that they all come from different walks of life. The poet, played by Kate Mara, is a is a coming from the nurse field. And she that means she has sort of a bleeding heart. She cares about everybody, she cares about everyone and everything, and always wants to look for the good and everybody and sort of help people so they can kind of get on their feet. That's that's her her shtick. Teo is a an adjuster. He's an insurance person. He does he's a numbers guy. He looks at the percentages, he looks at the, the facts, the way, of, of the way things are, and kind of is very matter-of-fact about all of it. And then um, the others, you don't really get too much about them, except for um, Poet's roommate, or you do learn that she comes from an immigrant family who has been subjugated to a lot of uh, racism and, and uh, heat thrown towards them for belief of things that they just never had anything to do with based on just the way that she looks and who her family, her lineage is. That's who they are in the past. Then we get shots of in the future where Teo is basically, he's the head of the FBI. And as the head of the FBI, he has put into place essentially minority report. <laughs> um, he has put into place a sort of a pre-crime instead of letting things come and let them like in being the police in that moment, they are a police state and they, stop crime before it happens. Some folks are clearly against them, some are folks aren't, but it's very much reminiscent of Minority Report. Stripped right out of that, that bad boy. 
we're now in a time in the future where we're no longer doing good policing, but we are now a police state. And then we look back in the present where we're going to look at where, how we got to the point of why that is the means that everybody sort of took. So it's the past when they're looking bright eyed, bushy tailed and naive the present um, where they are doing police the way that it should be done and seeing that it is not adequate. And then the future where they have done things to sort of circumvent that and what ramifications that comes from. And that's how this sort of series plays. And it feels a little bit like a hybrid of Quantico, that uh, that old show on ABC and Minority Report, if they sort of merge together. The problem is, even though that was an ABC show, the dialogue and writing on that show, Quantico, was significantly better than this first episode. There are moments when I actually put in my notes what the hell is this dialogue? It's so clunky and, and just just nails on a chalkboard. Um, it picks up and gets a lot better in the second episode. But this part of something episode leaves a lot to be desired. I also think, for me, it is a series that is much more dependent on the concept than it is the characters. And that's because of the way that it's stylized. I've, I've seen shows that go back and forth between the past and the present, like, hey, I'm going to show you what happened in the past to explain to you what happens right now, why this person is the way that they are now. This show has gone another layer. It's like, cool, I'm going to show you who they were, what they did, and then how we got there. So it's three parts, which means when you have three, we'll say three main characters, but two, um, but you're telling them their story in pieces where you're like, cool, I'm going to do this piece and I'm going to stop. And I'm going to tell you this piece and I'm going to stop. You never get to really get any actual character development or motivation. You're kind of just saying, I'm going to show you the smallest piece of who this person is, and I'm, we're going to move on, and we're not going to spend any time here. We're not going to dwell on it. And it just becomes very jarring. I, I don't have a problem with this stuff going around. It's just you then, as a viewer, have to realize that you're not watching this for character development or the character piece of it. You're just watching this for the story. Those are two completely different things. Can you have both? Yes. Can you have one without the other? Yes. There's sometimes where the story is the strongest part of me. Like, I don't care about these characters at all, but I am in intrigued by the story. Um, the story of this works. The characters, I don't, I don't really give a rat's ass about, especially not in the first episode. Picks up a little bit in the second episode, which is called The Fitness Test. At the end of the very first episode, goes back to the future and... Um, Poet had been a part of the FBI. She had been in where she, um, in the present day, she was undercover, got a bus about some un illegal police officers and shady police officers, got in with them, um, got the bus going, and then had to arrest them and be present. And they spit on her. And just basically, it made her feel well weird because she felt like she was used by the FBI, which she was. In the future, they're still doing it, um, but a person that the FBI, specifically Teo, has been on the watch list for, he has sent a um, poet to go investigate prematurely this person um, who is now on, who is on their watch list, uh, and so they don't find anything. But then that person shows up to Poet's home and uh, says that you are a puppet for the police and that you just don't know it yet. And... Um, you know, puppet of the justice system that you no longer understand. And then before he can say much else, he hands her something. And then the FBI, who's been watching her, who wasn't, who's been using her again, uh, come in and sort of arrest her and him. Uh, and she, and that's how that episode ends. Fitness F test episode, which is episode two, uh, and it's a much better episode than the first, um, has Teo and his partner Nunez going to uh, a home, I don't know where, but in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> it's a snowy bank. Um, but they meet this extremist named Mark in the present. This is post the fitness test stuff that we'll get, get into a bit. And, and then before he has made this declaration that the world needs to be a safer place by precogs, <laughs> if you will. Um, but he and his partner Nunez go to the house and Mark's being very cagey. But there's a point when uh, Nunez steps out and goes to the restroom and Mark's wife, who is of Asian descent, um, brings her into this hidden bunker downstairs and shows her that Mark has been watching the FBI. He has photos of Teo and the whole FBI organization. He's got CB radios. He's listening to everything. He's fully tapped in. Um, and she's like, I need a way out. You got to get me out of here. Nunez is like, 
got it. Let's not let on anything. Let's get out of here. Let me get out of here. We'll bring some help and we'll get you out of here. It seems like everything's going to be fine. They, they leave that place. But as they're leaving, um, Mark's wife comes back out, wants to have a little bit more of a conversation with Nunez, who should have just gotten in the car and taken off. Because I think by that point, you sort of blown the whistle. You can see what's happening. I imagine that Mark, being the way that he is, if he is watching everything, he's probably got a tape or a video in that room to see if somebody else comes in there. But a shot goes off. And, and shoots his wife, and then he starts shooting at Nunez, and a, a gunfight ensues. Um, firefight happens back and forth. Uh, Nunez gets hit, hit some more. They take out most of everybody there except for Mark. Mark escapes, but then Nunez tells Teo that, "Hey, they're they're watching us." Um, and he's like, she goes, says, "I think she says it's just the house or house," um, and he goes back in the house, looks in the basement, and sees that they're tons of footage and CB radios and photos of him, but it's all in the fire. Mark has had it all ablaze. So there's nothing that he can take back to say that this man was watching us, but it does keep him now. He's got a a foot or a, a, a bone to pick with people saying, hey, nope, we're going to stay ahead of this. We're going to stay ahead of this. We're going to stay ahead of this because this man was watching him. Uh, and he probably had some inkling of that and nobody really took him serious. We then see, go back into the past where we see uh, Teo and Poet sort of becoming a little bit closer in that um, Teo is failing his fitness test. They have to run around and do a certain amount of, a certain amount of distance in a certain amount of time. And Teo keeps failing. He's failed twice. But after his first time failing, Poet reaches out and says, hey, I can help you train. Like, I'm, I'm, I was slow to kind of being that bleeding heart again. And Teo's like, okay, cool. Then we'll do it. Um, and then as they become closer, uh, they have a conversation where Teo admits to having a situation where he was um, arrested when he was in the backseat with his brothers going out. He had never been hit or anything before um, or had anything like this happen, but he was pulled over basically because they were driving while black. Um, and his brothers, while they were the ones driving, he came, this officer came to the back with him and slapped him. Um, not because he had done anything wrong, but knew that he was the weakest of the three and that he could do something to him and he wasn't, nothing was going to happen back to him. And then they were all sort of at the mercy of him. And it was just kind of to show Poet that there is a world where always having optimism or being bleeding hard or always looking for the best in people or doing, or trying to help people out is not the way that this world, that's not the way that this world works. Teo operates more in a practical manner, like, nope, I know that there are bad people. This is what we have to do with these bad people. And then we have to be in a position to help ourselves from these bad people. Where, and where people like Poet are kind of just like, let's help for the good and all. And Teo eventually says that you are the people that I fear the most in this world. And he said he is sorry for how Poet sees the world. Um, is it? Apparently going to be his downfall. And that just shows you from that mindset, even in the past, where he was always looking at, like, if we can get ahead of this, if we can kind of create a police or uh, a, a team that can suss out the crime before it happens, I think this will be a safer world for all. The only thing that other really happens in this episode is that um, in the future, Lennox, who used to date a uh, poet, and then I was retired from the FBI. Um, he meets Poe and they sort of lament over the FBI. And uh, Poe lets him know that she's being watched. And he's like, well, by whom? He's like, well, the FBI is watching me. I don't know why and I don't know how. But something's up. Um, and they're thinking something, somebody is following. And they're thinking that I am in on something that I have no clue about. And Lennox at that point lets her know that, hey, you should probably reach out to, to Orr and, and, and let and recontact with her. And she's like, well, I haven't talked to her in nine years. And they show that they had an up and down fight. Again, a lot of it because Poet looks at the world so open heartedly. And she is comes from, like Teo, comes from a, a much more jaded world. And the only other real piece of this is that basically what Teo is introduced is AI. Uh, and AI police off, similar to the, the precogs and minority report. Um, and he's starting to get questioned because he's running up for 
mayor again. He, he was basically supposed to leave the FBI, his FBI post, but he's ex- asking for an extension. He wants to stick around a little bit more, just make sure that his operation is fully, fully being used. Uh, but he starts to be in question about arrest happening before anybody actually commits a crime, like kind of getting on the dirty side of it, but it's very vanilla at this point as far as the way that they're handling it. But he asks, and he says to them, um, he is super disappointed in the way that humanity has, tr- has treats itself. And he's like, I am putting this in place because humanity has failed to uh, take care of one another. And I think this is the best way to sort of do so. And that's, that's kind of the gist of how this, this episode ends. Uh, it is very, this show is very much a mixed bag for me. Well, I'll stick around. Sure. I'll give it a couple more episodes. I think there's only eight. I'll go to four and see if anything improves. I like, I'd like this episode more than I do the first, because I think that piece in the past with Mark and, um, Teo actually worked and provided some type of entertainment for this, for this show. Otherwise there's a lot of talking that I don't think admit. I don't mind a series that talks and has drama from start to finish. But I think when you're jumping from time frame to time frame, I never get to know about that character in that time frame at that moment. So it's hard for me to get any type of connection to anyone in this. So right now I'm watching a show that I don't connect to anyone because the story, the way that this is designed, doesn't allow me to. I think if you took one of these out and you did an episode all about the past or you did an episode all about the present or an episode all about the future and then came back in the next episode and divvied it up and then. I could probably connect more, but the way that they've established the storyline, it's just, for me, it is very difficult for me to find a character that I care about. Whereas I think with Quantico, because we had a main lead and we followed her through the past and present, and everybody else sort of circled around her, um, it was easier to sort of get invested. This show, I am not invested yet. Um, there are a lot of things that work. I think Brian Tyree Henry is really good. Um, but I can't, I can't say for sure because I don't know how, if he's supposed to be acting. Like it's very difficult to get a read on what the show is trying to have convey. Um, other than just saying, Hey, this is a good time and a good FBI show. This feels like an NBC or ABC or Fox show that happens to be on one of the prestige networks like Hulu, FX or AMC. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But if we're doing something as high concept as telling the present, the past, the present, and the future, I'm going to need a little bit more than just being a pale comparison to the Minority Report. What did you guys think about the first two episodes of Class of 09? Or leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDid at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other place podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.